Hey, what is going on, everybody? It is your boy Hobo here today, and ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, we are back playing more Madden NFL 19, and today we're going to get right into the swing of things. With week 16 predictions in the NFL, just want to kick this thing off by saying Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Hope that you guys enjoy uh, your holiday. Hope you uh, get some get some good food, have some fun times with the family. Overall, enjoy the enjoy the week, enjoy your time off, uh, and enjoy some football, which kicks off tomorrow at 4:30 uh, p.m. on Saturday between the Washington Redskins and the Tennessee. Titans, so if we look at the last couple of the games for these teams, the Redskins, 1-1, one one. they uh, they lost to the Giants pretty badly, 40, 40 to something or other, 40 to 16, 40 to 17, something like that, and then the Titans over there, they are 2-0 in their last two games, with that, that huge monstrous game Derrick Henry played two weeks ago, and then uh, an average game against the Giants last week. So basically what I'm going to be picking this game off of is how well these teams played against the Giants and the Redskins got smoked by the Giants and the Titans smoked the Giants. So I'm going to take the Tennessee Titans in this game. Uh, they're just a better unit and I think that uh, with a win here by the Titans it all but eliminates the Washington Redskins from postseason competition. Next up, Saturday, December 22nd, again, 8.20 p.m. Eastern Time, Ravens and Chargers. So the Chargers have won 10 of their last 11. That is mighty, mighty impressive. And I'm going to take them in this game. I think that uh, I think they're just a much better team than the Baltimore Ravens. Obviously, the, the Ravens have a great defense, and Lamar Jackson's a, a very fine player. But I don't think that they're built for the postseason yet, and I don't think they're built to win big games. And this is a huge game. Especially for the Chargers who are looking to get back in the postseason for the first time in God knows how long. So with that being said, I'm gonna take the uh excuse me, I'm gonna take the Los Angeles Chargers in this game. And then we've got kicking off on Sunday the twenty third at one PM the Texans and the Eagles. So I was at the Texans versus Jets game last Saturday, and boy oh boy, sitting third row which we eventually moved up to second row was uh, an experience that I'll never forget for the rest of my life being able to watch this team play and uh, being able to watch them win in a fantastic game they played like crap offensive line couldn't, couldn't block a, a shit but um, they they held in there they did and resiliently they, they fought back and they won the game they won it in in, in a nail biter and I think that a game like that just proves how great Deshaun Watson and DeAndre Hopkins really truly are. They're both fantastic players and they'll be namestays in this league for many years to come. And then on the other side of the ball, the Philadelphia Eagles, which okay they beat the Rams, but other than that, what have they really done? Really nothing. I mean, the Rams are a shell of what they were three weeks ago for some reason. I think they're, they, there's something wrong with the L.A. Rams. And a lot of it has to do with the the fact they're missing Cooper Cup and the fact that the uh, defensive coordinators around the league are starting to pick up on how to rattle Jared Goff, who, who looks like a rookie quarterback right now. He does not look impressive at all. He's got more turnovers than touchdowns throughout these past three weeks. And I think that continue. <clears throat> that's not what I was going for. I wasn't trying to bash the Rams just then. But what I was trying to go for was the Eagles. They beat a, a Rams team that wasn't impressive. I almost confused myself. <laughs> I thought I was talking about a Rams game there for a minute. But, um, yeah, that's why. All right, sorry about that. So let's re refocus here. I'm, I'm focusing on trying to win this football game that you're watching. But uh, the Eagles have beaten a less than impressive Rams team. And other than that, they've really done nothing exciting. And for some reason, Carson Wentz is starting in this game, which I thought that he was shut down for the year. But whatever. Um, this is a, as you can see on the bottom, it's technically one of these franchise games. So it's one of the quick play games that you see when you go to play an exhibition game. So I don't know why the rosters want to be updated. But either way, the Texans are going to win this game. 
Excuse me. For some reason, it's always when I start recording that I start yawning. For the past two hours, I've been fine, but as soon as I hit that record button, dude, I start yawning my ass off. And then I was burping just a minute ago, and life life finds a way to try to make me not be able to record videos. And uh, to them, I say f you. I'm gonna do it anyway. But uh, I'm, I think the Texans are gonna win this game. I think they're gonna win it in pretty decent fashion. And I know that the Jets, they did play a good game and they took the, the Texans down to the wire, but the Texans aren't a bad team and they played a, a Jet team that is young and hungry and they, they don't want to tank, they want to get better. And there's Zach Cunningham dropping an interception, that's nice. But that Jets team, I don't think, is as bad as their record really indicates. I think they're a, a not, not, a, not a good team per se, but a decent team. They're decent, and that's about as much as I can give them. <clears throat> but I'm going to take the Texans in this game. I just love watching them play ball. They are, in my opinion, the most exciting team in the AFC. And I know a lot of people say, oh, the, the Chiefs, and I'm like, no, don't care. I'm taking the, taking the Texans. Maybe not to win the AFC, but I'm still going to take them, at least in this game. Next up. 1 p.m. It'll be the Packers and the Jets. Just got talk, just got done talking about the Jets and then the Packers. They're a whole nother story. They're particularly bad, and uh, their chances of making the playoffs are pretty much none at this point. I don't think they can make the playoffs, and that's kind of sad. But whatever. Packers have missed the playoffs now for two years in a row. But I think that's more of an indictment on their coaching staff and on their ownership that they have the greatest quarterback in the game today and they failed to win more than one Super Bowl with him which is astounding to me I, I just don't even know how that's possible how you squander such a talent like Aaron Rodgers but I think the Jets are gonna actually win this game believe it or not I think they're gonna win and I think they're gonna officially write the Packers out of the NFC postseason race and um, kinda screw themselves over when it comes to the draft next year but yeah, I'm going to take the Jets in this game. For some reason, I just think they're they're good. I mean, the Packers, they don't have a win on the road. They have not won on the road this season, and I, and I think that continues this Sunday. Next up on uh, on CBS, <clears throat> I haven't been saying the, the channel names because I just caught myself in a little loop where I didn't mean to say the channel name, but I had to look it up really quick. So the Bills and the Patriots are playing, and the Patriots are going to win this game. That's all i got to say about that next up it'll be the Vikings and the Lions and this game is between two teams who uh, who suck and Kirk Cousins is garbage 17 giveaways this season the most tied for most anyway in the entire National Football League that's just atrocious I think the Lions come somehow some way figure out a way to take the Lions to the wire and beat them I think this one's gonna going to be decided by Matt Prater, but I am taking the Lions. And next up, the Buccaneers and the Cowboys. The Buccaneers, the only shot they have to win this game is to put up a lot of points, and uh, that Cowboy defense is <laughs> unbelievably overrated, as you saw what the Indianapolis Colts and their subpar offense could do against that defense, so I'm going to take the Cowboys in this game with all that being said. I just think that uh, they'll have a bounce back week. And I personally don't care if the Cowboys win the NFC East as a Giants fan. Because I know they'll get eliminated in the first round irregardless, no matter who they play. Uh, especially if they have to go to Chicago or if they're going to um, if they're going to New Orleans, if they somehow fall out of the top seeding. And, and I mean, a whole litany of things can happen that can send the Cowboys to less than favorable places to play. And... I know the Dallas Cowboys, when they get on the road against good defenses, they lose. And that's just what happens. And They they lost a, a big game last week that would have helped them clinch the division, but that's, that's not a thing they can do. But uh, they will clinch the NFC East if they win this game, and I think that they will win this game. I much personally don't care if they do or don't. It doesn't matter to me. Giants are out of it, so I don't, I don't care. I've got my favorites, and they're both on the other side of the conference. Next up, the Bengals and the Browns. So I'm going to take the Browns in this game. And the Browns, they're looking to sweep the Bengals for the first time since 2002. I was two years old 
possibly, maybe three, when this last occurred, which is absolute insanity to me. But then um, the Browns are actually playing meaningful December football because there still is a snowball's chance in hell they make the playoffs. And I would love to see it happen because that's, <laughs> that's just insane. From, from where they started to where they're projected to finish is astounding. They have six more wins than they did last season. Like, it's such an incredible turnaround, and the, the culture has completely changed in, in Cleveland, Ohio. And a lot of it has to do with the dangerous man himself, Baker Mayfield. But I'm so glad that they've gotten their their crap together because I've been singing the praises of the Cleveland Browns for years. And finally, they're going to prove me right. Uh, so, and I said, I said the Browns would win at least six games this year. They've met the six games. And frankly, I think they're going to get to seven. They're going to over-exceed my expectations for them. And boy, oh boy, am I so glad to like the Cleveland Browns uh, because they're going to they're going to progress into a good team and potentially a playoff contender in the American Football Conference. So I like the Browns in this game, particularly Jeff Driscoll and the and the Bengals do absolutely nothing for me. So cannot wait to watch the Browns win on Sunday. Next up, it'll be the Falcons and the Panthers. I'm gonna take the uh, I'm gonna take the Falcons in this game. The Panthers play like trash on Monday night against the Saints, and they easily could have, should have won that game. But Cam Newton is terrible. I don't know what I was watching on Monday night. He looked garbage. He had no power on the football. It looked like they were just floating out of his hands. It, I don't know if he's given up or if he just can't hang anymore, if he's got an injury or, or what, but he looked like absolute garbage on Monday night, and I could not even believe it. So I'm going to take the Falcons in this game big time. I like their offense. Next up, it'll be the Jaguars and the Dolphins. Dolphins coming in at a hot 7-7 seven and seven facing a 4-10 and 10 Jaguar team. That should have gotten a win last week, but didn't. So, um... I'm going to take the Dolphins in this game, actually. They they did make that game last week against uh, Minnesota close. It was a lot closer than the score showed it to be. And even in that game, Kirk Cousins, I believe he threw a pick six. So, I mean, I don't know what that tells you about the Vikings, but it tells me about the Dolphins that they don't plan on quitting, and they still have a shot to make the playoffs. They can go 9-7. and seven and finishes one of the better records in the AFC and have a, a an exceeding sub five or an exceeding 500 record I, I don't know what the proper term is maybe I do but I just can't think of it right now because I'm trying to focus on like three things at once but um they have a better than 500 record they could and uh, <clears throat> I like the Dolphins in this game matchup wise I'm going to take them Next up, it'll be the Giants and the Colts. Uh, I'm actually going to take the Giants in this game. Surprising, surprising. I just think that uh, they'll have a little bit of a bounce back week. It's not going to be pouring all over the place. They'll be inside, climate controlled. I think Saquon Barkley has a big day. I think he meets that rookie over there in Indy, Darius Leonard or whatever his name is. And I think they have a fun, fun little matchup. So I'm going to take the Giants in this game by just a nose hair. Next up, 4.05 p.m., the Bears and the 49ers. Give me the Bears and a landslide. Next up, 4.05, the Rams and the Cardinals. I think this game is going to be a lot closer than people maybe think it might be, but I'm still going to take the Rams. And next up, 4.25 p.m., the Steelers and the Saints. I'm going to take the Saints in this game. I know the Steelers just got a huge win Excuse me, on Sunday night. But I don't think it's enough momentum-wise to carry them into Sunday, into the Superdome. And I don't think that they can can beat the Saints when they're playing for home field advantage. If they win, they clinch home field advantage throughout the NFC playoffs. And that's going to be tremendous because they're a completely different team when they're on the road. And being at home, it's going to really help them out uh, going through the playoffs. And they're going to need this win. So I got the Saints in this game. Next up on Sunday Night Football will be the Chiefs and the Seahawks. This game to me is tough. I really like the Chiefs. Their offense is great. But I really like the Seahawks for the way they're playing kind of dirty. Nose to the grind. You know, get your elbow grease ready. 
hand in the dirt kind of football, you know, kick up a cloud of dust, run the football, beat your opponent in a submission. I love watching that kind of football, and they've got and they're playing good defense too, out in Seattle. But I, you know, I really don't think it's going to be enough to beat the Chiefs. I think that their superior offense is just too good for anyone to handle. Even a, a Seahawks defense that is playing well. I'm not going to say they aren't, but I don't think they're playing well enough to even put a put a cork right in the Chiefs' offense. I don't even know what what, what I'm saying. But uh, I, I don't think they're going to win. I, I'm going with the Chiefs. And then on Monday night football, 8-15, it'll be the Broncos and the Raiders. And boy, did ESPN get a deal with this one. They're going to have probably the least watched Monday night football game in history. Because this game is going to suck. 6-8 and eight Broncos, 3-11 and 11 Raiders. This game has no stakes whatsoever. Neither team is playing for Jack nor shit. And uh, I'm gonna actually going to pick the Raiders in this game. I don't know why. I think it would just be fun to watch them win. And, yeah. So that's going to do it, ladies and gentlemen. We've got football on Christmas Eve this year. And I'm going to be more excited. So that's going to do it for week, uh, whatever this is, 16 in the NFL. <laughs> Hope that you guys enjoy this week of football if you're going to a game. Enjoy it. Have fun. Don't be like the guys that we had to sit next to. Don't be a dick. Uh, just enjoy yourself. Have a lot of fun this weekend. Have a lot of fun over the Christmas holiday or whatever holidays you might be celebrating uh, this year in your household. But one thing's for sure, just have a good good, good week, and I will uh, I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday, everybody. That's going to do it for me, your boy Hobo, and I'll catch you all in the next video.